Have you heard of fur skiing before? What does it feel like to ski in Xinjiang, China? Altai in Xinjiang is believed to be the place where skiing originated. For centuries, it was a necessary skill for the locals to survive the harsh winters, and now it's more about a way of living. French photographer Nicole de Rouge and Moroccan architect Hasna Razlaoui experienced both forms of skiing while making the five-part documentary World's Ultimate Frontier. How fascinating is the oldest form of skiing on Earth? What makes them feel deeply connected with the locals, and what are their takeaways? Takeaways from the journey. I was pleased to be joined from Shanghai by Nico de Rouge and Hasla Razlawi. I started by asking Hasna about her first ever skiing experience in Altai. Yeah, so I actually had had no uh, skiing experience before, not just a little, not at all. Because Morocco is not really the the place to ski in, although there are some places to ski, but uh, I haven't done it before. So it was um, that first moment and first episode was quite special because not only it was the first time I'm going um, to start welcoming a guest and start the the hosting of the documentary, but also the first time I'm skiing, the first time I'm in Xinjiang, the first time of many things at the same time. So it was very emotionally. Um, intense and um, it was magical thanks to our guest Subinor because she was so loving so she was so generous with me she was um, um, teaching me how to do it and uh, I surpassed my own limits <laughs> because um, it was scary when you're skiing for the first time you don't even know how to stand how to go how to yes. handle it and uh, she was really like hugging me and handling with me the things and telling me what to do and uh, we did it we were skiing and yeah. i mean the slope was not so high but for me it was impressive anyway Stop it, Stop it, Stop it, Stop it, Stop it. i made it I saw, I saw experience. I thought you did great for, for the first time a uh, skier. Um, I was screaming all the time when I was on the, <laughs> on the ski for the very first time coming from Southern yeah. China, you know, not a region where people uh, ski a lot. So I sh totally share your um, fear, but you know, that excitement as well. Um, Nicole, let me turn to you a little bit and uh, ask you to describe to us um, your sentiments when you first got on the first ski, I understand it is a um, the world's oldest form of skiing. I never heard of it. Um, tell us more about it. What yeah. is first ski in the first place? <laughs> so, yes, as you said, it's the oldest uh, form of skiing um, that might have originated from this area. And basically, it's just two, ski, two skis made out of wood and then covered in horse leg skin under um, with the hair in a specific direction so you can glide down the slope but when you go up it actually catches on it doesn't and doesn't slide uh, and then you use one lace of leather to go around your boot and that is your ski boot uh-huh do we know how long it it has uh dating back to what age this form of skiing I don't remember exactly how long it was. Um, I remember it was a few thousand years ago um, when Malitin introduced it to me. Um, mm -hmm. And quite the opposite of Hasna, I've skied a lot when I was a kid. When I was young, I spent a lot of time in the mountains skiing, snowboarding. Um, and that was very different. You might have seen in the documentary this beautiful fall uh, that I took. Um <laughs> Because skiing on these first skis was very different from what I learned. Let's go. Everything the exact same. Yeah. Were you scared when you were on the on the first I was, ski? I was quite scared because of that leather um, boot. Like the only way your foot is linked to the ski is with just a string of leather. And mm. for people with weak ankles or knees, like me, um, I was a bit afraid of hurting myself. 
Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I want to I want to ask you, Hasna, how was this experience to you as someone who never visited Xinjiang before to go there, to see the facility, to see the place and to meet the people and to meet um, Subinor, uh, a Xinjiang. She's from Uyghur ethnic group, right? Yeah. To meet someone there and seeing that, um, you know, probably she's no different from any other woman you would meet somewhere else, were you, was it surprising? I mean, how did you feel when you had that experience? Um, with Subinor, as well as with the other uh, people, local people there, uh, it was um, surprising to see how much the connection was really easily, strongly established from the first moments with each one of the guests and also with Subinor. Um, we barely spoke the same language, but we, I really felt like we were besties skiing around. Um, it, I really felt closer to her. And that was the, that was the, the, the first moment of, you know, hosting the documentary. Did you, did you have this kind of experience with other people you met in Xinjiang or was it exception that you had with, with Subino? I thought it was it was exceptional because it was the first guest that I received. But honestly, I really felt that connection with all of the guests I've been with. I don't know what it is, but I really felt connected to them as if we were coming from the same uh, culture in a way. We were really uh, similar in so many ways in our personality. So there was just a very good energy and a very strong connection without speaking any words sometimes with some of the guests. We couldn't even speak, but those smiles, those eyes, those um, interactions were really, really warm. Yeah, And that yeah. is the thing that I remember the most uh, from my experience uh, in Xinjiang. Let me get to Nicole as well. And Nicole, you were, told, you were uh, interacting with the local villagers, right? Who were yeah. um, teaching you how to do the first thing. Did you have this connection with them? Was it fun was it easy to communicate with them did you um understood each other very easily so these guys were the were the members of the first key team of maritim um so actually communicating with them was not so easy because we didn't have much language in common um my mandarin is not that great and i think their mandarin was better than mine but still not that great either <laughs> Uh, so I was still, we were still going through Malitin to communicate, uh, or just as Hasna said, like we were on first keys and they saw what I, the struggle I was going through, and that just creates connection. You're practicing a sport, an old tradition together. They're introducing me to their culture, and they see that I'm trying and I want to understand. And I think in that case, we didn't use many words, but we still connected around the first key tradition. Mm. Uh, was it surprising to you? Because I read some statistics that Altai is actually uh, one of the most, the hottest ski destinations in China. The number of tourists that go to Xinjiang for ski uh, holidays from home and abroad actually jumped by, I saw something like 200% over the past year. Was it something you had expected, um, Nicole, first? I didn't see that in, uh, the place I went to was was a smaller village, you know, mm. for, for Hasna's um, part, when we went to Koko Tuohai, um, definitely saw a lot of people, even from, from abroad. And recently, um, this year, I mean, last year, I heard from friends, uh, who told me they were going to Xinjiang to ski, uh, both uh, friends from Shanghai, China, Shanghainese people, and also foreigners. Hasna, you were in Kukotohai, right? And you were in the ski resort. So what did you see and uh, what's your experience? Um, well, for me, it was one of the first times. Anyway, I'm seeing a ski resort, so I wasn't expecting <laughs> <laughs> anything, and I wasn't. I was surprised by default, anyway. So I, I didn't have a comparison with anything else. But yeah, it was impressive to see how big it is, how beautiful it is, and how how there was a lot of people, and there were um, quite some good infrastructures, and it was really um, ready for tourism. I think it was mm. quite impressive, yeah. the, the Kokotohai resort and slopes compared to other places I've, I've been skiing in China. 
um, the infrastructures in Kokotwa High and, and the slopes uh, were a step above even the slopes and because it's also higher mountains compared to oh, yeah. where I've been to good quality snow I mean it, it seemed really good yeah so you would recommend it to your friends or family yes. who love skiing yes For people <laughs> okay. who the slopes are too high China, though the slopes uh, yeah. are too high. <laughs> uh -oh. Not good for me. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I want to try it. Okay, try it. But I have that in my mind. Um, but let, let's let's talk about something else. As I said, the yields and um, mm. the you're an architect, Hasna. So I I guess you are particularly interested seeing the people designing the yields and rendering it, you know, in in the computer. And how did you find that experience, and uh, what did you take away from that? That yurts day was uh, one of my most special moments, like ever, <laughs> in my life. It was really wow. uh, first I met the 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 son of our guest. He was um, helping his mom, you know, designing. Uh, he was collaborating with his mom designing those yurts. And uh, what I remember from that night in the this gigantic, impressive, most impressive actually space I've seen, because it, not only it's different from anything I've seen before, but also the, the size of it was really um, immense. But this night was uh, very special to me because I don't have exact memory, but I have memories of flashes of um, colors, fabrics, animal broderies everywhere on the walls, on the furniture, this beautiful furniture, old uh, furniture of Xinjiang. And I remember music. It was a big party at the yurt at the end of that day. There was music and the, I remember flashes of, of movements, of dance movements. And again, I remember the people uh, people's eyes, people's smiles, people teaching me how to dance. And it was just a, a mirage of, of dancing and movement and music and colors and, and culture and, and, mm. uh, and dressings. And it was so rich in that regard. Yeah. Well, as I said, when I watched that uh, clip, I clearly felt you were in that moment. You were definitely, um, wow. yeah, as one, you know, with the people with that, that yes, time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, and they were they would uh, introduce you to their, their mem members of their family and their clothes. They would put hats on you and dress you with their clothes and teach you how to dance. They were really proudly showcasing their culture, and I felt I was part of it mm. that night. You know, this is very interesting because when I was in Xinjiang, I've been there twice making um, films and reporting. And when I when I left, I always felt like I didn't want to go. You know, the people yeah. were so, so kind, so sweet. So what is your impression, Hasna, of that place? Would you say that moment uh, epitomizes that first encounter you had about Xinjiang and you're, go you're going to remember that place as, as such a warm place where you connected with the people and the culture? Absolutely. Xinjiang is a place that, that left an um, everlasting impression on me. Um, architecturally, people, food fabrics, cultures, art, everything really stayed within me. And I'm having, I'm still having the feeling of everything that I experienced there when I think about it, when I think of the people and I think of everything around it. It was, um, it was a place I will never forget, forget that's for sure. Hmm. Um, Nicole, was that your first experience in Xinjiang or have you been before? And um, what did that filming trip uh, leave with you? It was my first time in Xinjiang. Um, I have a lot of friends from Xinjiang in Shanghai, um, a whole team I, I play sports with, but um, it was my first time ever there. And I felt it was very interesting for me to see a lot of the different cultures and different minorities that make Xinjiang, uh, because I was lucky enough to go and visit, um, you know, the first episode, as you saw, was with the Tuwa people uh, for the first key, and then uh, went to see Kazakh, a Kazakh family, then Tajik, mm -hmm. then Kyrgyz. So it was very, very diverse, just like the region. And most of these people, as Hasna was saying, were very warm and very welcoming. And they saw me, they saw me come and ask a lot, a lot of questions, and 
they were always willing to share what makes their traditions and their culture special, unique, and interesting. Mm -hmm. And so it was many different experiences that were very interesting for me uh, intellectually, but also visually for photos. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of very good photos that I, I, I still love to this day, I took in Xinjiang. Yeah. Well, I hope you you will um, keep that you you yeah you keep that in memory, and I hope that in the future there may be future opportunities um, for you to visit Xinjiang. I certainly will go back <laughs> this year. Yeah. Do oh, yeah. Practice your skiing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, skiing as well. <laughs> Let me pump up my courage. <laughs> Don't want to break my legs, but uh, I think I'll be in good hands. Anyway, thank you so much, Nikhil and Hasna, for sharing with us your Hello. stories on this filming trip, and I. Recom and I recommend more people to watch World's Ultimate Frontier, um, five-part documentaries about Xinjiang's life and culture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you.